You're listening to Law in Action with me, Joshua Rosenberg. If you were listening to the first programme in this series of Law in Action, you may remember I briefly mentioned a ruling by the European Court of Human Rights some 18 months ago in which the Strasbourg judges found that blanket and indiscriminate powers under which the police can keep DNA samples given by unconvicted suspects was a breach of their right to privacy. Now, when the Human Rights Court finds a breach like this, the country concerned is required to stop it happening again, generally by changing the law. But the last government didn't introduce any reforms, and the new coalition hasn't made up its mind yet. All this struck a chord with one of our listeners, Frances Clark, who's come into the Law in Action studio. She's spent more than 25 years uh, working in the law, and she now wants to become a barrister. With her is someone who's already been called to the bar, Alex Dean. He runs a campaign called Big Brother Watch, which challenges state intrusion. Frances Clark, why are you worried about this? I'm worried because from my own experience, arising from an incident last June, I was arrested by the British Transport Police. I simply asked for the, a refund on my Oyster card, which led to an allegation being made by the station manager that I'd been abusive to him, which was retracted. But nevertheless, the police arrested me. I was held in custody for a few hours. During that time, my DNA was taken together with fingerprints. I feel it's wholly wrong. I've never been convicted of anything, charged of anything. I've not been reprimanded or cautioned. And I'm at a loss to understand why my DNA has been taken from me in this way. I suppose you could have fought this. I mean, you accepted the penalty, you accepted the consequences. Obviously, there's no punishment of any great significance. And it's surely right that the police should keep a record just to ensure that you don't get into trouble again, if you like. I was left in that position purely because I requested the CCTV tape and then two days before I had to decide whether to elect for the fixed penalty or a court hearing, I was told that the tape had been inadvertently taped over. Alex Dean, there does seem to be a bit of confusion about these penalty notice for disorders, PNDs, these fixed penalties that that people uh, like Francis Clark have accepted. What is the effect of one? It is that the matter is disposed of with no formal admission of guilt that would take you to court and see you get a criminal conviction and a criminal record. And it seems to me that when you pursue someone like Francis for your her DNA records, notwithstanding the fact that the case has stopped there, you violate the purpose of these fixed penalty notices or fixed penalty disposal. Didn't she accept a, a fixed penalty and isn't it right in those circumstances that the police should keep records and that includes records of her DNA? I don't think so. I think when you get a resolution or disposal like that in a case which is trivial or at least non-serious, it ought properly to be treated by the courts and by our police services in the same way as a disposal of no further action being taken, this person is innocent. Tell me about the fact that the government, the last government and this government, haven't done anything about the uh, Strasbourg ruling. I thought they were required to do so. They should. If the Strasbourg court tells you you're doing something as wrong as this, government ought to act and ought to rectify the legal situation, whatever it is in the country in question. The last government didn't do anything on this because it thought that was wrong. The new government's position is just weird because we've got a coalition of two parties, both of which thought it was wrong to retain DNA from innocent people, certainly for as long as we're doing now. What I cannot fathom is why there's been no action at all from the coalition yet. Francis Clark, you've tried to ask the police to destroy the sample. I have. It's, it's taken a year uh, to try and elicit an answer from the British Transport Police, only with the help of Alex, who has come along and helped me enormously, have they uh, finally responded in March by saying rather unsatisfactorily that they have no reason to destroy it, they uh, do not intend to do so, and only in exceptional circumstances will they do so, but they don't explain what the exceptional circumstances are or any reasoning as to why they won't destroy it. Alex Dean, is there any reassurance that you can give to Francis Clark? Well, I'm afraid I can't give reassurance to Francis, whose case I know well, or any of your listeners whose case I don't know, because the situation in this country is, it seems to me, fundamentally unjust. Depending on where you live in the country, you can be treated completely differently on this issue, depending on the will or the whim of the chief constable concerned. Our research at Big Brother Watch turned up two striking examples, the one Cumbria, the other Strathclyde. Both forces took DNA from thousands of people who turned out to be innocent. Strathclyde took off 100% of those people. They removed the samples of everyone. In Cumbria, they removed the sample of less than 1%. How can that be right, that we're treated completely differently depending on where we live? Alex Dean with our listener, Francis Clark.